Good day, welcome to Great White Retro. I'm Gord Fessick and this is my dining room. <laughs> Our topic today is this DRS-80 Model 1 that gave me a bit of trouble last episode. With any luck, this will be our last Septandi episode for 2023 because I think we're going to get this freaking working. Let's get her done. And thanks so much to folks who reached out in the comments on the last video. Nate the Fighter suggested that the ROMs might be corrupted. Now, I didn't believe that at first, but I figured let's just deoxit those sockets for the ROMs and for the processor. All right, let's get those cleaned up. It's a two second fix if that takes care of that corruption that we found uh, earlier. It seemed like it wasn't even executing code. Let's see if I can explain what's going on. It seems if I shift the cable a little bit between the keyboard and the main board, this result changes for some reason. All right, let's see if I can tickle the problem a little bit. If I could do a little bit of jostling around, and this time I get the basic prompt. Granted, it isn't working quite right, and the video isn't quite working right, but it is working right. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the solder joints along this ribbon cable here, because there's all kinds of flux left over from a previous repair job, and it's a bit of a mess. So it turned out that the ROMs didn't have any real problem, but jostling this little ribbon cable around uh, seemed to cause the most problems for us. So, here I am cleaning up this mess that was left from a previous repair. Got my desoldering grade and I soaked that thing in some proper resin flux, rosin flux, before getting all that excess solder off of there. It was harder to get the ribbon cable off the main board than it was to get it off of the keyboard component. And then I reflowed the solder on there just to try to reconnect everything. Then I gave it a good clean with alcohol to get the flux off of there. I did some continuity testing afterward, and well, I got a different result entirely, which you'll see shortly. Now that looks a lot cleaner, but take a look at this screen now. Well, it's a little more stable now, but now I think we got some stuck keys. Ah, oh, these bloody plastic ribbon cables. Yeah, that was the same result I got when I pressed random things on the mem size prompt. But uh, anyway, off comes that dumb ribbon cable. And it turns out you need the keyboard attached or the computer will be stuck in this loop on startup. So yeah, off comes the ribbon cable. It was much easier to remove it off of the keyboard uh, board, which is a single sided circuit board. Okay. I found this old bit of scuzzy cable here, and I've already trimmed the ends off. I'm going to kind of do them in pairs, so every two wires I'll put into one pin, give it some extra connectivity, and I'll remove the excess cables uh, from here. Once I've got these done, I think there's like 20 of them here. If I had pin headers, I would use those. And besides, the original factory setup had this plastic thing anyway. So as long as it's a little longer and a little more flexible, I think I can manage. Those same ribbon cables are what caused the ROM problems on the previous revisions of these Model 1s. This one already had the newer ROMs on it. But after some painstaking work and checking and rechecking, well, I found another short. <clears throat> so I had to desolder the lines that were affected, check them again, make sure I wasn't shorting anything out, and then I was able to reconnect them and get those things cleaned up again. What a pain in the neck this ribbon cable was. Hey, uh, I wonder why Radio Shack didn't use pin headers for these things. Maybe if I get a chance and I can get some pin headers, I will replace this. I had to desolder and resolder it a couple of times. But we seem to have stabilized back to where we were. Let's just give it a power cycle to be sure. 
Okay, that's encouraging. Huh, the reset has a bounce problem, but it looks like it's working okay. All right. I already tried swapping these two video RAM chips and they didn't make a difference. I have the same display. So I'm guessing the next step is to desolder all seven of these, replace them with sockets, and replace them with the parts that I ordered. The Model 1 uses seven chips, so it doesn't have a lowercase uh, character set for the video RAM. But that's okay for this. I end up desoldering the original socketed parts. I'm guessing that was from that previous repair. You can see the leftover flux from the original repair. You know, if I were the technician, I were inspecting this board, I'd have been ashamed of this. Of course, we know a lot better now for doing desoldering and cleaning up flux. But yeah, first the socketed uh, RAM chips came off, and then I took time to desolder all of the soldered in RAM chips. And I tried to stagger them like one chip at a time to try to spread the heat around as such. I learned that technique by watching someone change out the RAM on a 1750 RAM expansion board for the Commodore 128 to help avoid lifting up uh, traces and to avoid damaging the RAM. But yeah, after a bit of effort, we were able to get all of these static RAMs off of there. The system RAM was already socketed, and I think the system RAM was fine. Otherwise, we wouldn't have run into uh, basically just the problems we had. We would have had no basic prompt, never mind bad video RAM. So yeah, up and down, up and down. I've gotten a lot of practice on this desoldering gun since working on the Commodore 16, so this was pretty effortless at this point. One solder pad lifted up, but fortunately these are all plated through holes, so I was still able to solder the socket into place and get a connection. The traces in question were on the other side of the board. Yeah, let's get those rams off of there now that they're desoldered. And there's the cleaned up board with the empty spaces. Here are the sockets. I've got them just sitting in place right now. I'm going to cover this with some painter's tape to hold it in place. Then I'm going to solder two legs for each socket. And then I'll remove the painter's tape to get the remaining legs on these sockets. I actually ran out of 16-pin sockets and had to use pairs of 8-pin sockets <laughs> to sort this out. But I did manage. Alright, and just like with the desoldering, I kind of went one uh, chip at a time, or one socket at a time, so that I spread the heat around, gave the parts a chance to cool off before moving on to the next leg on the same part. So not too bad. As I'm recording this commentary, I'm not seeing the four times uh, playback speed. I'm just going to let this thing do its thing. Alright, and about that one lifted pad, I made sure that the legs still made contact. These were sharing common address and data lines. So that wasn't a problem, I just made sure that those were still connected. Then I gave the whole work area a good scrub with 99% IPA to get all that flux off of there and to prevent any possible shorts. I tried to inspect this as best as I could and I'm pretty sure I got it right. And then a bit of compressed air to dry it off on both sides. There are the finished sockets for the video ramp. If I feel brave, I may try adding an 8th video RAM just to get lowercase characters on here. I'm just happy that I was able to get this far along. Mem size. So, 
The new video ram appears to be working. We have a working computer. Ta -da. So to summarize, we had a flaky ribbon cable between the keyboard and the main board. I did some deoxid on the on the ROMs and on the Z80 processor, and I replaced all of the static RAMs. Also gave uh, the previous rework a proper cleanup. In the style of Adrian Black, it freaking works. <laughs> there we go. Time to put this thing back together. I only gave this thing a very quick wipe up on the inside. It was little on the sticky side. I'm not sure where that came from, but I'm gonna have to do a proper clean on this machine at some point. This keyboard uses Alps SKCC key switches, similar to the Apple II Plus and Apple IIe. They may even be interchangeable but these keys all seem to be working just fine. The numeric keypad is also different, whether it's there or not. Some machines don't actually have that. And there we are. So, these screws, we put the two shorter ones in the front, the moderate length ones on the sides, the longest ones in the back. Interesting that this system does not have an RF shield. I don't know if it ever came with one. I don't know if one would actually fit. There we go, nice and solid. Let's give this thing a quick run in the basic interpreter to make sure all that RAM is still working. There we go. Well, after some really old cheap ribbon cable and a bunch of busted video RAM, it freaking works. I don't believe I'm quite done with this machine. I want to give it a good cleanup yet. And I want to try out the diagnostic ROM that Adrian Black produced, but I don't have the right adapter boards yet. And we're going to see about ordering those and getting them on the air. Until then, good day. <laughs>